Hello everyone and welcome back to your YouTube channel and welcome to this amazing video today. As you must be aware, I have been creating a series of videos related with power system protection, specifically uh, testing um, protection relays using different approaches. If you are following my YouTube channel, you must remember that in the previous video, I was testing the overcurrent, non-directional non overcurrent characteristic of uh, a relay using real-time simulation and using the concept of a uh, relay in the loop. But today I have a new and very different video. Today we are doing something quite interesting. We are using today uh, Omicron CMC256 Plus to test the non-directional overcurrent characteristic for two different relays. Today we are talking about two different relays from ABB, the RED640 and the REF630, okay? Be prepared because today uh, it will be several videos uh, discussing different steps in order to set up, prepare everything for this testing, okay? And uh, also, I am presenting some theory related with uh, uh, protection relay testing, okay? But before we start, before we start, I would like to take the opportunity and recognize the very important help that some colleagues around the world have been providing. To be honest, I would like to recognize Jorge Vasco from Ecuador. He has been extremely, extremely helpful and he provides um, a lot of support for many, many hours to my PhD student, Marta Acosta, regarding configuring the CMC256+. Plus. To be honest, Jorge has been a very good collaborator. He has spent many hours and he helped a lot in that process. Also, I would like to recognize Marta Noemi Acosta Montalvo. She is my PhD student, but to be honest, she is the true hero behind the laboratory. Okay, you you can you can you can hear my voice. You can see those uh, presentation, but everything the hard work behind the lab is coming from Marta Noemi Acosta Montalvo. Also, I would like to recognize the beautiful and brilliant collaboration that we have with ABB and all the support that they have been providing during the creation of the DGNC's lab. And finally, but not least, uh, we have here Omicron. Also, I would like to recognize, I would like to recognize the strong support, the technical support from the, from the, from the colleagues in Omicron. Thank you very much for everything. Thank you very much for helping so much, okay? But now, before we start with business, I would like to make something clear. I would like to say that all the opinions, all the discussions here, they are my responsibility. Nobody else take responsibility about this, okay? Also, as I say in every one of my practical videos, I would like to recognize that mm, these videos and these slides are created using technical documentation from ABB, from Omicron, but I highly suggest that to get proper information, go directly to the technical reference, okay? If you are here, it's because you are in YouTube. Please, if you have time, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And also, please, if you have the opportunity, follow me on my social media, Twitter and LinkedIn. But let's start. The first very important point that you must realize is that the protection systems, they are very, very complex systems, okay? And especially right now at the moment that we are in this digital transition of the energy systems. If you look here on the right hand side, I have the classical representation, the classical representation of a protection system. A protection system is a very interesting element inside the whole electrical power system because there are many components inside, okay? Many people just focus on the protection relay, but to be honest, it's one of the elements inside the protection system, okay? And also, there, there is a many sciences and many, um, many engineering aspects involved in the protection systems, okay? 
We have here transductors, the classical currents and voltage transformers that they send the signals, they send the signal to the relays, okay? But those devices, the transductors, they can be the currents or voltage transformers, they are sensors, they are sending signals, okay? And then we have here the DC power supply. As you must be aware, the relays require supply, electricity in order to work. And this protection system, DC supply, it can be extremely, extremely complex, especially when we are talking about huge substation with high reliability and very important for security inside the electrical power system. The DC, the DC protection uh, system, DC supply, include battery, chargers, all the circuitry related to monitoring and power supplies like inverters, rectifiers, and so on, okay? What I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to say is that the protection system, DC supply, is very, very complex, okay? And also, we need to have a proper control circuitry and that involves, for instance, auxiliary relays, trip coils, and so on, okay? Finally, we have here the important part that is the communication system. Today, communication system, the information and the information is moving inside the electrical power system and communication system for protection is a very important, very important aspect, okay? And the core of everything here is the protective relay. Why I am creating this very specific explanation? Well, because my idea here is to make you aware the many different components that you can find inside the protection system. And today, this presentation, this presentation is only focused on testing protective relays. I mean, I will just focus here in the core of this protection system. I will be talking about the protection relay testing, okay? And that is the objective of this important video, okay? But why? Why do we need to test? Why do we need to test protection relays? And that is a very interesting question. And here, I would like to tell you that today, today, protection systems, the protection relays, they are extremely, extremely complex. A single relay, a single digital relay, has so many features and capabilities, and their number of features and capability are increasing every single day. And protection relays right now, they are not only designed for protective relay functions. In reality, they can do more and more than that, including control, including monitoring, including communications. What I'm trying to say is that a modern digital relay is something extremely, extremely complex with many, many functionalities, capabilities, and features. For instance, here, if you look on the right hand side, you can see one of my favorite relay from Cell. This is the seven, the Cell 751. This is a, a feeder protection relay. The name looks extremely simple, but the Cell 751 is, is charged with many, many protection capabilities, okay? Here you can see, here you can see in those circles, in those circles you can see many, many of the protection functionalities that you can find, starting from the classical overcurrent, including elements for phase, ground, negative sequence, but going more, 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 including under frequency, over frequency, rate of change of frequency, fast rate of change of frequency, vector shift, and so on. What I'm trying to tell you, what I'm trying to tell you is that those very small devices, they have so many features and capability, okay? And something that is extremely important is that the digital era 
is making changes inside those relay extremely, extremely fast. The modern digital relays, they are extremely dependent on the software and firmware, and that changes in the software and firmware allow you to get so many other functionalities, enhance the capability, and keep update your relays to your protection relays to the most important challenges of the modern power system. Well, as you can see, as you can see, the modern protection relay require testing in order that everything is properly working inside the relay. What I'm telling you is that this very short motivational speech is one way to show you that those devices, they have many things inside. They have so many insights and we need to be sure that everything is proper work, properly working, okay? And that is the reason, that is the reason that we need, we need protection testing, okay? But now, a very interesting and a very important question is, okay, we are interested on relay testing, but inside this huge but very, very large set of testings. How do we classify those relay testing, those protection relay testing? Okay, there is some scientific literature. There are many documents that they talk about five different categories when we are talking about uh, protection relay testing. They are five categories. They are extremely simple and very easy to identify. The first one is the type testing. We will discuss that in a minute. Then we will have the acceptance testing, then the commissioning testing, then the maintenance testing. But there is something that no much people want to do, and that is the troubleshooting, okay? There are five different categories. There are five different categories that we, uh, that we can assume include all the different type of relay testing methods and equipments, okay? But something that I want that you understand is that in the normal, in the normal, uh, in the normal development of uh, protections inside electrical power systems, we are mainly focusing in these two categories. What, I tell, what I'm telling you is that commissioning testing is probably the most critical, but also maintenance testing, especially for very old electromechanical devices, they are extremely critical, okay? And what we want to do is to ensure the safety, to be sure about the functional operation. And of course, we are creating the best line for the maintenance, okay? We don't want to do, we don't want to do troubleshooting, but time to time we need to solve problems, okay? And that is the reality and we need to do it, okay? But let me start with the first, with the first category of those relay testing, okay? The first one is what we call the type testing. The type testing is probably the most expensive, the most complex testing that you can perform in your relays. And those, those uh, protection relays, those tests, those tests can be, can, can be performed in both stream, okay? On the, uh, on the side of the relay manufacturer that they want to be sure and demonstrate to your client that the relay is doing what's supposed to do, okay? That is basically, that is basically the, uh, the intention behind the type testing from the manufacturer point of view. They would like to demonstrate to be sure for your client that the relay that you are offering is giving you the functionalities and is fulfilling all the requirements, okay? Many manufacturers, many manufacturers, they provide to you a test certificate, a type test certificate with a full report indicating that the relay is properly operating for the intended application, okay? That is basically, that is basically the idea of this type testing. 
from the manufacturer point of view, they are a very large set of testing that, that of tests that you can do, but I will not be dealing this in this video. Okay. From the end user, of course, the, the user would like to be sure. I mean, they receive a test certificate, but also they want to be sure that everything is fine. Okay. And that is the origin, that is the starting point for another very important type of test, okay? And that is the acceptance testing or the acceptance test. The idea of the acceptance testing is basically verify that all the relay algorithms and characteristics, they are fulfilling the objective. What I am trying to tell you is that you would like to be sure that you acquire, that you have the relay to do the job as you want inside your protection system, okay? And as consequence, the acceptance testing is basically in uh, identifying if the models and the algorithms and the features inside the relay, they are basically following what the manufacturer tells you in the user manual, okay? And they are very different aspects that you want to test when you are doing a second testing. You would like to test the inputs, the outputs, the display, the communications, and of course, in some cases, in some cases, you would like to do more defined uh, testings like pickup and time test, okay? What I'm telling you is that basically for acceptance testing, you are doing functionality, uh, functional tests in every single component that you can get access in the relay, okay? And the idea is to prove that the relay and the characteristic that you receive in your relay, they are properly working, they are not damaged by transportation or something like that. Transportation was extremely critical in the past for electromechanical relays, okay? Well, and then we have the category number three, and the category number three is probably something that is quite interesting if you are working in commissioning sewer stations, okay? Because the category number three is commissioning, uh, commissioning and startup test. And those are very interesting, very sensible tests. To be honest, it's a very exciting, it's a very exciting area if you are working on protection systems, okay? There are many challenges of commissioning a superstation. There are many challenges and you require a lot of knowledge and especially you need to be an engineer, a full engineer, understanding many areas like communication, data, and so on, okay? But coming back to the focus here, the commissioning and startup tests, they are typically the tests that the utility run when they are when they place the relays in the superstation, but they test the relay prior to put on service in the full service inside the superstation, okay? This kind of test, the commissioning test, they are very site-specific tests, okay? They are basically tests that you run in the field and they are very interesting and very important because that is the starting point of the lifetime of the relay. Those, those, the information that you will collect over there, that will be the starting point of your utility database information about the behavior of your relays, okay? The idea during those uh, tests is that you would like to test all the protective elements and logics and settings that in order to show you, to show that they are correctly working for the intended use, okay? Uh, when we are running commissioning and startup tests, basically we are including tests for calibration, implementation of new settings, functional tests of inputs and outputs, logics, and that is basically what we are trying to do when we are doing this kind of tests, okay? The idea, the idea of those commissioning tests is that uh, it's verifying the effectiveness of the calculated relay elements 
and logic settings, okay? Um, it's a very interesting aspect. Uh, many people believe that the commissioning tests, they are, they are just one time in the, in, 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 in the history or the life of the Suez station. And that is not totally true, okay? Because time to time, time to time, we need to do what we call recommissioning some aspects inside the Suez station or the electrical installation, okay? Because time to time, time to time, we have um, a new, a, a, a huge components inside, a huge number of components inside, a large number of components inside the Suez station that we are replaced or we are upgrading, and then we need to recommission that uh, components, okay? And again, we are doing this kind of test, this very specific test for commissioning and starting up, okay? Probably the most typical, the most typical test that we run uh, are related with the maintenance, okay? And let's go for the category number four. Number four is the life cycle maintenance testing, okay? What I'm telling you is that we install the relays. We are sure that the relay is properly working. Then the substation or the installation is going hot, it's going alive. And then time to time, we need to check again if everything is working properly. And that is the idea of the maintenance testing. The maintenance testing is just to be sure that the relay still operating in the conditions that's supposed to be working, okay? That is the idea. The idea is that we go to the installation, to the substation, and we then we take this relay and isolate this uh, relay, and then we run some, several tests and we identify is the characteristic of this relay, the logic and everything is still working inside the intended performance and the intended intervals that we are going, okay? And these, these tests, these tests, they are sometimes called routine tests, okay? Because they, they, they are basically created in a periodic in a periodic way that time to time we go to the substation and we run those tests in order to be sure that everything is properly working, okay? Um, the time interval between those tests depend of many aspects, okay? What I can tell you is that today we are in the digital area, we are using digital relays. To be honest, the digital relays, they are extremely good. Because right now uh, we have relates that they have internal self testing and they can have the possibility of identifying any issue related with the relay. For that, re for that reason, maintenance testing in digital relays is not vital, it's not crucial, okay? It's, it's, it's because they have this self checking testing and they can communicate if something is grown, they have additional contacts, they can create a, a, a signal, they can say, okay, we have identified something grown, please take actions, okay? The problem and, and the main aspect that is creating the need for a, a, a very frequent maintenance testing is related with the old technology for uh, protection relays. Electromechanical relays, they are extremely, extremely sensible about the environment, about contamination and so on. And as a consequence, the protection function, from functions characteristics they drift over the time. They, they, they are a bit modified over the time. As a consequence, those relays require some periodic inspection, some periodic checking and calibration time to time, okay? Some books, some scientific literature, they say that it could be every year or every two years. However, that depends on many aspects, okay? For instance, for instance, in this table over here, I am showing some uh, frequency of testing related with different protection systems. If you're in transmission system or you are protecting a generator or you have some special protection schemes, uh, frequency voltage, etc. This table is taken from the PGAM. You can see the link here at the, at the bottom of the presentation. You can go over there. 
But the inter interesting part over here, interesting part over here is that you can see that the typical, the typical uh, calibration test is in a frequency of every four years. And we have here also a functionality test, functional test every four years, okay? That depend of many uh, aspects. Typically, each utility define, define the uh, frequency for calibration and frequency for test, okay? And finally, finally, but not at least, I will tell you about the fifth or the final category related with relay testing, protection relay testing. And this is one that not much people want, and that is troubleshooting, okay? Time to time, time to time, um, we need to address some situations, and um, we need to use those uh, relay testing procedures in order to inspect the, uh, inspect the relay, calibrate the relay, or make some adjustment, okay? Uh, that is totally true. That is totally true when we are working with electromechanical protection relays. It's not so, so, mm, it's not, not so true when we are working with digital uh, protection relays. Digital protection relays, they don't require that kind of uh, protect, uh, calibration all the time because they are digital, they have solid state components, and as consequence, it's it's not, it's not typical that those relays create troubles, okay? Digital relays, they have self-test functionalities and they, 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 they are extremely, extremely reliable, okay? And also they have functionalities as if something is detected wrong during these self-test functionalities, the relay will take some actions like warnings or alarms but also the relay have the possibility of limiting the capabilities or transferring the capability of the protection functionality to another relay. Of course, that depends on the protection scheme, okay? I will not discuss that here in my video about IC61850. I will discuss more about this, okay? But finally, again, what I want to tell you is that those... Uh, those electromechanical relays, they require care, they require inspection, cleaning, calibration, adjustment. That is something that is extremely important, okay? Well, at this moment, I will finish this video and I will finish this discussion related to uh, the basic understanding about the different categories of uh, testing um, protection relays. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you at the next video where I will start to discuss the study case that we are using for testing the non-directional overcurrent characteristic in uh, ABB relays RET640 uh, uh, and REF630 using Omicron CMC256+. Thank you very much for watching.